There's some times when I should have been dead in my grave. There's times when I should have been locked up. Trying to tell those walls, but God had a different plan. Yes, God. And he had mercy on my soul. Yes. And I come to understand that the plan that he has is intimately connected to your plan. His plan is for me to stand before you today and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Good news. Amen. Amen. That those who receive it in their hearts will be changed forever. Hallelujah. Ain't that an awesome plan? Oh, right. oh come on. That's an awesome right. plan. Awesome plan. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God Thank has you. been so good to us. Yes. He's been yes, so Lord. good to us. I, 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 I chose the song for the children of Mark and you for Sister Stephanie. She was just something she always did something up to you. Amen. Amen. But the, the Lord had put this uh, on my heart because I wanted something different. Amen. I wanted something different coming from your hip, bro. I wanted something different, and, and I wanted something that was going to be pertaining to uh, the lesson today. Amen. Amen. Just hit it. I want to find something like there. Amen. Uh, the title of our lesson is Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Open the Eyes of My Heart. And so the song was fitting because. Put your hands away. Put your hands away. Say now bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. For your glory. For your glory. For your glory. Hallelujah. My endeavor is for me to decrease seriously. See, you hear it all the time. Sometimes we say a lot of things in churches that become a church cliche. Amen. Amen. But the reality in my mind is for me to decrease so that I can sit out there where you at and receive what the Lord is about to say. Amen. 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 He just have to use my body as a vessel. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. But the Bible says that the husband has got to be the first partaker of the fruit. So it's got to hit me first. And since it hits me first, then now. I'm asking God to allow me to decrease so that he can increase and speak to all of us. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what the Lord is saying is that we need to start taking on a kingdom perspective. Say it with me. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom perspective. perspective. Amen. Amen. And the reason why it's called the kingdom perspective is because we have to get the viewpoint that we are not from this world. Amen. Amen. Oh, I can see that as a piece of work. <laughs> see, I know we love this world. Mm -hmm. I love this world. Amen. Amen. I love the things we get to do. I love the anticipation of watching my grandchildren grow up. I love the anticipation of, of helping them throughout their days uh, as they become to get older. I, I, I have great anticipation in my plan the things that I want to see come to pass. I have, have great anticipation of seeing Heaven's Gate become a, a big viable part asset of this community. Amen. I have all these visions and all these, these dreams. And these things can only be accomplished in this world. Amen. Amen. And although I may not live to see them because I see them already, I may not live to be a witness to them, but they're going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. All right? So in, in order for me to see them, I have to take on a kingdom mentality. In other words, I got to quit looking at things from a human perspective and start looking at things from a kingdom perspective. I, I heard not too long ago about Walt Disney and how they were doing this commemoration of Walt Disney about uh, his, his uh, Walt Disney land and the Walt Disney world. And they were uh, giving his wife uh, this award. And the young man that, that was presenting the award, he came out and he said, all this that we see of Walt Disney is uh, too bad he didn't live to see it. And uh, we want to present this award to his wife. So when his wife came up, uh, she came up and she said, I want to beg the differ of the young man who uh, presented me with this award. He gave me my introduction because one thing about it, if Walt Disney never seen it, then it wouldn't be here. Come on now. In other words, he seen it before he even came. Listen, when you take on a kingdom perspective, you can see things that God has in store for you that have not yet come to pass. But because you know in your heart of hearts that God is not a man that he shall lie or the son of man that he shall take back his promises, that just what God said I can have, it's mine. Amen. It's mine. Good help is mine. 
Prosperity is mine. Right Fruitfulness is mine. Mm -hmm. Not only is it mine, he promised it to my seed. He right. said, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Right now. Come on now. But you can only see these things when you take on a kingdom perspective. When you start looking at things through the lenses of Jesus Christ. So you have to ask the Lord, say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart so I can see what you see. Because as long as I keep looking through my carnal eyes, then I'm going to only have carnal expectations. Right now, I see. So your expectations got to rise higher. Come on, somebody. Our problem is that we got too small a view of who God is. God can only do this much when he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask him or even think. God can do anything, but he wants to do it all. He already got it planned for you, but he's waiting on you to take your faith and mix it with his word. Because the Bible said that although the gospel was preached unto the children of Israel, it did not profit them anything because they didn't mix it with faith. Oh they heard the word. Mm -hmm. You are sitting right there in those seats and you are hearing the word being proclaimed from the word of God unto your audible hearing. But you got to not only hear with your ears, you got to hear with your heart. But until you hear with your heart, then it won't profit you anything. But for those of you who do catch it, those of you do, who do understand that the vision has already came to pass because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God stood at the beginning and he finished the end. Right. He stood at the beginning and he finished the end. Do you know what? This was more so. I know most of y'all probably been in the airplane, right? When you look out over the landscape as you stand down here on the ground, it looks totally different than what it looks coming in in an aircraft, right? See, you know you got acres. In my house, I know I have seven and a half acres of land. And as I look out, I can't really tell what it looks like. But as you come in on an aircraft, you can see it already squared out just like it is. You know why that is? Because from up above, I have a bigger picture. I have a different perspective than what I have down on earth. God sits high and he looks low. So he already knows what the end is, and he knew it from the beginning. He already knows the plan that he had for your life. He just want to reveal it to you. Oh, come on, come on, come on. He wants to reveal to you the plan that he has for your life. But you can only see the plan when you have a kingdom perspective. You got to see from this point of view. Amen. Amen. I remember when I first got called to preach the gospel. I went to my pastor and I told him, I said, Pastor, I believe the Lord called me to carry the gospel. He said, Brother Harmon, I knew that when you walked in the doors of my church. He said, but it wasn't up to me to reveal it to you. I had to let God reveal it to you. Amen. Because if he had called me, then he could have took me down. But when God set you up, <laughs> when God raised you up, can't no man take you down. Right now, you man. Me down. So I asked God, I said, Lord, well, what kind of perspective do you want me to take? What is it? What is it that you want me to see? Because I see everything going on with my eyes. I, I see the word. I, I, I understand through the word that the word says, if you look for these signs, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, when will these things come to pass? They were going around trying to show Jesus everything. They showed Jesus all these big old buildings in Jerusalem. And they were walking with Jesus. And they said, Lord, look at all these big old beautiful buildings. And Jesus said, there'll come a day when not one of these stones will rest upon another. He said, I was speaking of the end times. They said, well, Lord, when will this thing come to pass? Jesus said, you will know that these things come to pass when you see these signs. When the love of men begins to wax cold one toward another. When you hear earthquakes and different things going on in diverse places. He said, when you see a great falling away from the church. He said, when you see all these things taking place. When the enemies of Jerusalem or Israel and kept all about Jerusalem, he said, didn't know that the end is near. But guess what? It's only the beginning of birth pains. He said, when you see these things, it's only the beginning of birth pain. You women know what I'm talking about, right? The beginning of birth pains. I remember my wife pregnant with my son, and we would sit there and induce our labor. But when we first got there, I was sitting in front of the monitor and the little thing going, dee, 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 dee. and me and her both were like, ooh, that's a big one. Ooh, that's a big one. Ooh, that's a big one. After they induced the labor, they were like, bam, the, the thing going off the chart. And she went like, like, ooh, that's a big one. She's like, ah! Ah, because it was the beginning of birth pain. What was it saying? She said that you are about getting ready to break forth a life. That's what's happening. Jesus said, 
when you see these things arising, this is only the beginning of birth pains. In other words, there's something on the horizon. Guess what's on the horizon? The sky is about to be cracked open because the Bible says that Jesus will come back in the same manner he left, just as he ascended back up into heaven, not the same way he's coming down. Only this time he's not coming down just for, for with grace and mercy. This time he's coming down with judgment. And we got to prepare the people. This is our calling. But we don't see it. I can tell we don't see it because we still live it like we see it through carnal eyes. We still live it like tomorrow is going to never come. We still, listen, you got to live like the day that you're last day on earth. Every single day. I understand everybody want to get the you know, best out of their life. You know, people always say stuff like, well, this is my life. I don't want, want, want my life to live. And I'm going to live the best my ability. Wait a minute. That's your ability. Don't mean getting all the pleasure out of this life. That don't mean getting the best of your ability. Because you won't get all the pleasure out of this life. But what happens when this life is past? What have you invested in the life to come? Because he come. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus come, he left on the Mount of Olives. And when he come back, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives. Amen. And when he stands on the Mount of Olives, the Bible says that the mountain is going to be cracked in two. Amen. He said the moon would turn to darkness. The sun would turn to blood. Yeah. And he said every eye will see him. Even the atheists. Even the agnostics, he said, every eye will see him, and every tongue go have to confess. I mean, they may not want to confess now, but at that time, every tongue, right. Muslims, mm -hmm. Hindu, Buddhists, every tongue is going to have to confess that Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone, yes. is Lord. Is. I gotta hate what it is that God hates, and I want to love what it is that God loves. See, that's a kingdom perspective when I look in the eyes of God. Intense spiritual intimacy with God increases spiritual capacity. <laughs> when I talk about intense intimacy, intimacy could be something, for example, I, I want you to stay in the spirit. I'm going to speak to your carnality, but I want you to stay in the spirit. Okay, as a, a husband and a wife becomes intimate, it could be simply just holding hands. Okay, that's an act of intimacy. Now, intense intimacy could mean love making. Okay, that's intense intimacy. And it has to do with the exchange of souls. With, 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 we, we're going into spirit. It's our physical that's making the act, but it's our spiritual connection. Understand? God wants to have a spiritual connection with us. And the only way we get that is through his word, through knowing him, through spending time with him, through, through, through listening to him. That's the only way we get that. We get this intense intimacy. And when we get this intense intimacy, he makes room, more and more room. It expands our capacity for more of his spirit. Okay? The reason why we can't see through the eyes of our heart or have a kingdom perspective is because we don't have a whole lot of intimacy with God. <laughs> My wife wouldn't know I loved her unless I demonstrated intimacy. She don't know I love her because I tell her every day I love her. You know, listen, God, you, you come to church every Sunday. It still don't have no love for God. And I know it because I watch your life. <laughs> My life ought to display what my heart is. Amen. If you love the casino, then that's where you are. Amen. That's why you can't pay your tithe. Because you get it to the Indians. Okay? If you love bingo and can't come to church on Tuesday night, all right? Because the bingo all over on Tuesday night, that's where you are. If I watch your life, your life will tell me where your heart is. So if my heart is with God, then everything in my life is going to surround him. Amen. 
everything that I do is going to have to include him because I want the more of him. And the more I get of him, the deeper I go into him, the more of myself I give to him, the greater capacity he gives me to receive the more of him. Then we sang the song, fill me up, till I overflow. If you didn't mean it, you should sing it. Come on now. So if I want to be filled with the more of God, then I got to divest, I got to empty myself of me. Come on now. You got to get you out of the way. But until you get you out of the way, then God can't come in. I want to see what he sees. You know why we get mad so quick? Because more of us is in us than God. The Bible said he's not easily angered. Come on, man. The Bible said that God is not easily angered. We get angry real fast, don't we? I mean, some of all the way of somebody talk about us, we, we lose our mind. We set our Christianity on the shelf, and we're going to say what we want to say, what we want to do, and we figure we go back to the lady and pick it up. That ain't God. That's you. Come on, man. That's you. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 through 19. We'll read a bit down. We'll come back to the word. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 to 19. Somebody says, speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. some water, please. Yeah. Hallelujah. I need the Lord to speak to me. Yeah. Amen. You know there's always someone speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And the three people speaking to you could be you, the Lord in the devil. The more of God you get in you, the more you're able to discern who it is speaking to you. Come on now. If the devil is speaking to you, he will have you doing things that you know is not of God. If you're speaking to you, then you don't want to do things that's going to satisfy your flesh. But when God speaks to you, he wants you to do things that's going to glorify him. You get up in the morning, mm -hmm. and God says, I want you to fast. You know what y'all say? Get back. You wait a minute, devil. Mm -hmm. That ain't the devil. Mm -hmm. That's God. God wants you to fast. And you know why God wants you to fast? Because someone else's life is on the line. Mm -hmm. It may not even be their life. Someone else's well-being may be on the line. See, it ain't always for you. To have a kingdom perspective and be to operate in the things of God, it's not always for you. Don't you know God can just save you for you? If, he, if that was the case, when he saved you, he could have brought you on there. Hello! If that was the only purpose that God saved you, he could have saved you and just brought you straight to heaven. But he had a plan with your life and in your salvation, which was intimately connected to somebody else. If God said, if my people Oh, somebody help me. My if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways mm -hmm. and seek my face and pray, yes. and then Jesus said, Dear, but I hear from heaven. Mm -hmm. So if my people who are called by my name, that means that he, he saved us to do it. At least pray. Mm -hmm. And when we pray mm -hmm. in faith, mm -hmm. God moves. Come on down. When we pray in faith, God moves. So it is prayer that initiates me. It's prayer that initiates the plan of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, don't you know Jesus said, when you pray, he said, if you pray. He said, when you pray, pray like this. He said, wash your face and anoint your head with oil that you don't appear to be fasting to everybody else. Mm -hmm. He said, keep looking good. Wash your face and anoint your head and keep looking good. He said, don't disfigure yourself like the hypocrites do. But he said, I see what you're doing. I'm a God that sees in secret. Amen. Amen. We're talking about having a kingdom perspective. We're talking about having a bigger view of things. God sits high, right? And the Bible said that we are now seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. Therefore, we should have a bigger view of things. Amen? Amen. 
Let's go to word feed, chapter 1, verse 16 again. Paul had, he, he said, this is my prayer. Paul just found out that the Ephesians, have, uh, even though they ain't got a whole lot of money, they still want to contribute to the saints. Mm -hmm. Oh, ain't that something? Folks who ain't got a whole lot still try to give. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. And when Paul heard about it, he said, this is what I said. Paul said, Cease, I have ceased not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. He said, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Why? That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. That you might know why God called you. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints are. And also I pray and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. To us word who what? To us word who what? Believe. Believe. Not to the other ones that sit around the believers, to us who believe. Not to the ones who are just in the church, the ones who are believing. Not just the ones who look like they Christians, the ones who believe. There is an inheritance to those who believe. He says, it is according to the working of his mighty powers. With God mighty. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. What we don't understand is that God has an inheritance for us. When we became a part of the family of the kingdom, we became heirs and joint heirs to the riches of his glory. That means that what God has for us, we are entitled to. The Bible says that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity in the chastisement of our peace. It was laid upon him over 2,023 years ago when he was nailed to the cross. And he said, and by his stripes, we have an inheritance to heal. Healing is the children's bread. Come on now. Healing is mine. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't just go and write that quote scripture about your healing. You got high blood pressure, but yet you study eating all that salt pork. Okay? Right. It, it, it don't work like that. You, you, you can't just go out and claim healing for your diabetes, but you stay at the dessert bar all the time. It don't work like that. Right. You, you got to put some effort in it, too, because it is an inheritance that God has gained you when you became a part of the family. Amen. The greatest inheritance that he gave us is for his glory when he severed us from sin. When you got saved, God severed you from sin. He cut sin off from you. And oftentimes, because we look at things through a humanistic perspective, we think that we're not always good enough because of the things that we continue to do in this human body. But God said, that's not so. Yeah, listen, I, I need you to understand this. I need you to understand that. I need, I need you to to pay close attention to Because this is one of the living things that hinder us and have the king respect because we look at ourselves from our humanistic perspective about the things that we do. Listen, anybody here don't see it? Don't raise your hand. All right? Amen. But because I'm saved, because I've surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, even though I sin, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> Because the greatest sin that any man can ever commit is to not receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? But when we look at ourselves and we look at others, because we pass judgment on people all the time. When we look at ourselves and we look at others, we make a judgment call based on what we've seen in the natural. That's why the Bible says some of the ones that you think will make it in heaven ain't going to make it, some of the ones you think ain't going to make it, go be there. Right? Because one, we think it will make it based on our judgment from our humanistic perspective. When a person has, especially amputees, well, on the other amputees, they have what they call uh, uh, phantom limbs. Phantom limbs. A phantom limb is when a person had a piece of their body severed. Say you had your leg cut off. 
but yet the land's not there, but you still have pain mm -hmm. in your head mm -hmm. from a leg that's no longer there. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes a person that had a severed limb will get up out of a chair and they'll fall forward because in their mind, the leg is still there. They wake up in the middle of the night screaming out in pain from a limb that is no longer there. See, they don't understand that the limb has been severed. So when they severed the limb, they took the pain away that was attached to the limb. But it still reminds in their psyche. Understand? It still remains in their psyche. So they have to deal with this. A lot of people who have limbs severed or have, have amputees, they have to go to a psychological evaluations shortly after that so they can prepare them for this. Mm. All right? What, what I want you to understand is that even though God done cut the sin away from you and he has now made you an inheritance unto the kingdom of God, sin may sometimes still rise up in us. The limb might still have the pain there, but the reality is that the limb is gone. Sin might still rise up in my life, but the reality is that God has washed away all of my sins, and he has made me whiter than snow. The reality is that Jesus Christ took all of my sins upon himself, and now I've been freed from sin, from the penalty of sin, from the shame of sin, from the guilt of sin. I've been free. I've been free. I don't know that. Except Amen. when sin tries to dictate in my life. Amen. That's right. But I gotta have a kingdom perspective. Paul says that he wants the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. He will listen. I want the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened. I want to know God all the more. I want to know all the more what he wants from me, what he wants me to do. I want to know when he wants me to move and when he wants me to stop. I want to know when he wants me to give and wants me want not. I want to know everything that God wants me to do. I don't want to make a move without him telling me to do something. Because in this life, we ain't got a whole lot of time to make mistakes. All right now, amen. I tell the young people all the time, I said, when I was young, I made mistakes with my finances. I made mistakes in my marriage. Thank God he gave me the time yeah. to recover. But as I'm closer to the grave than I am the cradle, I understand that time is limited. Amen. So that means I have to minimize my mistakes. Amen. Come on now. You have to minimize your mistakes. Yes. So in other words, I got to take on a kingdom perspective. My kingdom perspective is going to somebody who can see a bigger picture than what I can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking from the eyes of someone who knows what's down the line. All right, now. now, he may have glory for me mm -hmm. at the end, but I got all sorts of traps and snares and all sorts of enemies in between the beginning and the end. And I got to keep my perspective on the end. I got to keep moving forward in spite of what the enemy tries to do. I got to keep moving forward. I can't get in the middle of my transition that God has died for me to have and decide all of a sudden it's too much. That's what I said about young married couples today. Young married folk don't know nothing about marriage today. Young folk don't pay no attention to what the preacher said. What the preacher said, for better or for worse, and see for the health and death of you part. For rich or for poor, they don't know nothing about that. They just go to work, they just sit there and smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, when worse shows up, come on now, or sickness shows up, oh, or body shows up, it yes, becomes too much to bear. They want to get up and get out yeah. because I can't take this. It's too much. They ain't doing what they supposed to do. And I tell you right now, if everybody in the whole world jump off good do things, I'm jumping. Mm -hmm. Just because folks don't know what they're supposed to do, it does not make me to abandon my responsibility to do what I'm supposed to do. That's a kingdom perspective. That's looking at it from God's point of view. Amen. Amen. That's what God is saying. He said, I want you to start looking at life through my eyes. Yes. 
Yes. Look at them through my eyes and understand that I want the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. I want to give you the revelation from the kingdom and not the revelation from the people. Because every time we get the revelation from the people, you know what? You get revelation from a lot of people who ain't got no revelation. Mm -hmm. You ever heard folks try to tell you what they would do if they was in your shoes? Mm -hmm. That's a human perspective. Girl, I would take that. Girl, I'd leave him. He wouldn't do me like that. He gonna pay something he ain't just gonna stay up again. No, girl, I wouldn't do that. And soon you leave him, he over her. Oh, come on now. We have to keep the stuff, but let's keep it real. Let's keep it So you take on human perspective and you negate God's perspective, you already ended into trouble. Already. You already in it in the trouble. See, in my day, we had thick skin. Today, folk can't take stuff. Some young folk want to kill themselves because somebody talking about. Yes, 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 I know. And then we try to empathize with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, don't. Do that. We try. Mm -hmm. But my daddy talked about you like a dog. <laughs> but do you think that stopped me from doing what I was trying to do? You think that stopped me from going toward the goals that God had set in my life? Matter of fact, for me, it was more of a catalyst. <laughs> because you tell me I can't do something. Come on, baby, you need another fuel to take. That's all you did, you just fuel to take. If you tell me I can't, I'm going to prove to you I can. Somebody Amen. said one time that the best revenge is success. Amen. Amen. The best revenge is success. So don't tell me. Talk about me like you want to. Talk about me like a dog if you want to. But they ain't going to do nothing but just make me dig deeper. That's they ain't going to do nothing but make me get more and more on my knees. They ain't going to do nothing but make me push my way back even farther. And I want to seek God because I know that he can overcome this thing. Come on now, somebody. Come on, what God got for you is for you. We got to start seeing God bigger. See, please hear me. Please hear my heart. We have got to start seeing God bigger. Stop looking at God in such a small view. If I'm seated with him in heavenly places, that means that I'm seated with Jesus Christ right next to God. The Bible says that there's a man in heaven right now. A man, a human. There is a human in heaven right now. And his name is Jesus Christ. The Lord. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he's making an intercession for you and I. And he says that I am seated with him in heavenly places. So now that I'm in heavenly places, I've got an opportunity to have a heavenly view. So since I see what God has for me, no weapon for me, kiss me will prosper. I'm going to have everything that God said is mine. And I'm not going to stop until I get it. Come on now. But I see God as being bigger. I don't listen. I tell you all the time. Don't sell it for a man that ain't got a plan. Oh, he might be fine. Come on now. He might look like your pastor. Come on. <laughs> he, he might have it going on. His physique might be everything. His hand might be down to his ankles. He might be everything. But when he spent more time in the mirror than you do, you already got a problem. Amen. <laughs> you going to work and he's sitting at home. You got a problem. You ask him, what's your plan for us, baby? What's the plan that you have for us? What, what do you see us five years now? Okay, let's give it. What do you see us a year from now? I don't want to blow your mind. So what do you see us in a year from now? Amen. If he can't give you the plan in detail, you better leave it alone. Because the worst thing you can do is follow somebody who ain't got a plan. Come on now. Follow somebody who don't know what it is. hard to follow a park car. Come on now. They need to know where they're going. It's every man's responsibility to lead his family. But the man got to have a kingdom perspective. The man got to see through the eyes of God. A man got to have to consult God about every decision that he's to make in his family. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. And God is over us all. So being the head don't just mean you're the dictator. Being the head means that you're responsible. 
Amen. 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 Not only are you responsible, you're being held responsible. Amen. 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 But I don't know what my responsibilities is until I get a kingdom perspective. Because growing up, all other men try to tell me the humanistic perspective. Boy, you're going to be a pimp, man. Don't just sell for one. I'm going to get you a bunch of women. Oh, man. Don't, <laughs> come on now. Come on now, my man. I wouldn't play all like that. I wouldn't play all like that. I would love to do that to me, man. No, no, no. That's a human perspective. And it always leads to death and destruction. Come on now. But when I get a kingdom perspective, God says that I am to love my wife and take the example of Jesus Christ loving the church. And Jesus died, sacrificed himself for the church. So as a man, one of my reports of kingdom perspective, I'm supposed to look at my wife as the church. The, 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 the church is styled in the Bible as the bride of Christ. So as I look at my wife as the bride, I'm to sacrifice for her. Listen, I don't care if, if, if don't nobody else in the house eat she eating. Right. Come on now. She eating. I want to make sure that she's taken care of. I want to make sure that the kids are taken care of. Listen, I would always say that this is one thing that my wife would say about me. She'd tell other people this. And it, it kind of hurt my feelings, but she was doing it to tell the truth. She said, My husband had, you know, he, he's a good father, but he ain't nothing as a husband. <laughs> and she would tell the truth. You know, I was out there doing my thing. I was corralling, I chasing other women. I wasn't being faithful like I was told people. I didn't have a kingdom of perspective. Come on now. But well, once I got a kingdom of perspective, then I had to change the way I began to live. My, but she made, the, she, she made the statement, and the statement was so true. And even though it hurt me, because you know the truth hurts sometimes, don't it? Yes, yes. Even though it hurt me, it made me come up. It made me come up. You a good daddy, but you ain't a hood. I wanted to be both. But I didn't realize the importance of it until it was almost too late. <laughs> I didn't realize how important it was. it was just as important as being a good father to be a good husband. And before I could be good on any end, I had to be a good man of God. I had to get God's perspective on how I should live, his instructions on what I should do. Come on now. But until I got God's perspective, all I had was human perspective. And it made me down the hall road every time. Every time. My perspective was, you had a problem, get drunk. That's all I don't know. What it do? For about an hour or so. <laughs> and then when you sober up, the problem is you got drunk over. Then it got worse because I neglected it. Instead of addressing it and doing something about it, I'm not going to forget about it, did I? Now I'm sober. The problem got worse. So what I do? Get drunk again. Don't act simple. But when you get a king perspective, the king perspective, God says, He said, a righteous man. If you cast all your cares upon me because I care for you, mm -hmm. then I will enlighten your understanding so you will know what move to make. I know you got yourself in this problem, but if you follow me, if you let my word be a light unto your footsteps and a lantern unto your path, I'll show you the way out of this darkness. But you got to be willing to follow. And most times, as men, we don't like to follow, we want to lead. Sometimes your wife might say something to you and she didn't say it because she wants you to fix it. She said it because she don't want somebody to talk to. You ought to be there to talk to. But no, it's me. What we gonna do? We're gonna fix it. I've had the same experience the time. I tried to fix some things that my wife didn't want me to fix. She didn't want me to listen to her. But when I tried to fix it, I messed it up. Yeah. Come on now. That's what's up because I, I got any fellas out there who can talk to this. Don't we wanna fix it? Amen. That's my response. We wanna fix it. But they don't always want to fix. We have to go to the one who made it. I told you a couple weeks ago, if, if your plumbing messed up, you call a plumbing don't you? Your car messed up, you call a mechanic. So who you call when your life messed up? Come on, that's right. You call Jesus. When your life jacked up, you call on Jesus. And he'll fix it every time. And guess what? He ain't gonna charge like a plumber man because he already paid for it. Right. Amen. He's already paid the bill. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. And not only that, he said, it is my inheritance. 
It is my inheritance, Mama. Hebrews 4 16 said, I can now come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain the mercy and the grace to help me in a time of need. Listen, without a need, I can go to the throne. I can go to my daddy. I can tell my daddy everything about it. It ain't that he don't know already. He already knows, but he just want to hear from his child. How many y'all just like to hear from the child every once in a while? He got your own kids. You'll hear from all the time. But you so glad when you do hear from him. Come on now. You be so glad when you do hear from you get that phone call from you. Be so glad to hear from them. Amen. That's better you just hear from them. They don't want it. That's my God. Amen. But I, what I'm trying to tell you is, in every point of our lives, in every point of our lives, we have to get a kingdom perspective. Say it with me: kingdom, kingdom perspective. 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 I, we need to seek the seat through God's eyes. This when it comes to your finances, what do God say? How would God say I should handle my finances? If He said that a good man leaves his inheritance for his children, children, that means I might I need to start working on my finances so I can leave something for my grandchildren. Ah! When it comes to my marriage, He said that I'm supposed to love my wife like Christ loved the church gave itself for. Then I need to spend more time being intimate with her and loving her. All right. <laughs> when it comes to raising my kids, the Bible says that if you spare a rod, you spoil a child. But if you beat it, you save the soul from hell, then I need to find out when my child is being disobedient or when my child has just made a mistake. Now, I need to be able to discern these things. See, what, I don't care what part of your life it is, God has a resolution for you right here in the morning. But you got to search the scriptures. Somebody say search the scriptures. You got to search the scriptures and find out what God says. See how he sees it. If you can't do that, then you don't want to be a student of the Bible. You know, you can sit here with your Bible and, and your notebook and your pen and all that stuff because you want to lose the part. Look at part going to do you no good. All right, amen. All the time to do some good is when you put it into practice. Right. Amen. You got to learn to put it into practice. If you're not willing to put it into practice, you're doing nothing but wasting your time. Amen. And you know what I say? You waste your time because I don't preach what you hear now. Because I made my calling and my election sure. I preach to the empty views. Amen. Amen. But the word that comes out of this pulpit, if you can take it and you can apply it, then that never boss, He said, "I pray that you receive knowledge of Him." Listen, knowledge is, is to know. He said, "I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know God better." He wants you to be wise, and he wants your understanding to be open and awakened to know God better. And then he said, that you may know in your heart the hope of your calling. How many of y'all know why God called you? If you don't know why God called you, you should know by now. Let me tell you why he didn't call you. He didn't call you to just sit there. Amen. That helps? Amen. Okay. The hope of your calling. Mm -hmm. Only way you're going to know the hope of your calling, you need to know God. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is Paul's prayer. And then he said, Know the value and the glory of your inheritance. Mm -hmm. You listen, we got an inheritance, saints. Mm How -hmm. I many of y'all kind of wish you was Warren Buffett's child? Mm -hmm. Or Bill Gates? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Or you had an inheritance from LeBron James? How oh. many of y'all had an from somebody rich? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you, you can't pick two. Y'all want to pick two. That's right. Amen. 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 We all want something of value to roll down to us. Amen. 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 But the funny thing about an inheritance is that inheritance are often filled with what is called sustainability. Mm -hmm. When people build inheritance, they build in sustainability, mm -hmm. meaning that the inheritance does not stop with you, that it's sustainable until the next generation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many ever heard of the Rockefellers? Everybody here probably heard of Rockefellers, right? Mm -hmm. Rockefellers made their millions off of life insurance. Mm -hmm. They take a million dollar policy and put it on each person in their family. And when the first person died, they took that million dollars, that policy that turned on them, and they reinvested even more. And they made a dynasty off of life insurance. Amen. But they put in it that 
Each one who passes away, there's a, a greater portion that goes back into the investment of the family than what you get to live off. Amen. When the inheritance are built, they're built with what is called sustainability to sustain everyone from generation to generation to generation. All right. We did some old folks. And we are spinning up for the month. <laughs> now we just went through COVID. A lot of y'all got big old checks. Y'all got stimulus checks. Y'all got good IRS returns and on tax returns. Some of y'all got COVID money. Some of y'all get food stamps three, four thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. And now you're putting a dollar in off the tree. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. Yeah. He said that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us believers. Mm -hmm. The power is towards us. Mm -hmm. The inheritance is for us. We live beneath our privilege because we don't have a kingdom perspective. God wants the best for his children. I don't know about you, but I wanted the best for my kids. It was the best I could do, but it was the best. So if God owns all the land, the earth is his and the fullness thereof, the world and those that dwell therein. If he owned the cattle on a thousand hills and all the silver and gold in the field, then if I'm his child, he wants the best that he can do for me. And since his best exceeds anything that we can ever possibly imagine, then he wants the best for us. Amen. So if you're not getting the best, it's because we're living beneath our purpose. The only reason we're living beneath our purpose is because we see God from a small point of view. He might be able to heal a headache, but he can't heal things. Come on now. He might be able to help me pay this ten dollars, but he can't pay me ten million. Don't you know it's the same thing? Come on now. It's the same thing. He said, if you just have the faith, I'm a mustard. Yes. A mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds there is. Mm -hmm. right. He said, you just have the faith of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. But he said, mustard seed will produce a tree that's so big that birds can lodge in the tree in the name of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So now I said, you just take a little bit of your faith mm -hmm. and you mix it with my word mm -hmm. and you sow it into good ground. He said, you will bring forth a bountiful heart. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way the economy works in the kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. Give, and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shake yes, it together, yes. and run it over. But the only way you get the good measure, pressed down, shake it together, run it over, you got to first give. And then you can't just give. You got to give with a cheerful heart. Come on now. So there's a way that I sow. I, it, it's not just good enough for me to sow a seed, but it's the way I sow a seed. I don't just run out there and throw a seed on top of the ground. No, I had to go out there and cultivate the ground. I had to get the rocks out the ground. I had to get the weeds out the ground. I had to get the ground ready for the seed. And then once I plant the seed and I water it and I cultivate it, then and only then will God pray for fruit. You throw some on top. How many of y'all have a spit watermelon seeds out on the ground? Then we got them later on. We got a little watermelon plant coming up. <laughs> And that mother did the next thing. Cause I'm gonna hear shout with them. God wants us to dig deep. This is not really my thing to tell this story. Don't you know? God wants an infinite more deeper intimacy with you. Anything that is of great value. This is what that little boy said. He said he wants us to know the value of the glory of our inheritance. Anything that is of great value, you ain't gonna find it laying out on the ground. Right. Amen. Diamonds, pearls, ruby, sapphire, all these things that are of great value, you got to go deep. You don't just find pearls laying up on the seashore. You got to go out there and go deeper to the ocean to find a pearl. Right? You don't find diamonds just laying out there on the ground. You got to dig deep for them. You don't find gold just laying out there. You got to dig deep for them. I'm trying to tell you that. Anything that is of great value is going to take some exertion on your part in order to recover it. And you can't get tired halfway through. You got to dig for it. You got to fight for it. You got to work for it. Because the devil ain't going to just let you get it. Right. You go up in the hall with me. I went to church today. I'm ready to be every day. Now you ain't. You'll be cussing by the out by the time you get out the front door. Mm -hmm. This is an honor of work, thanks. 
This is something that we do repetitively. This is our lifestyle. Okay? For lack of better words, this is our religion. Religion is something that you do over and over and over and over. This is what we do. Amen. Amen. We spend more and more time. When my wife retired, I said, man, it's going to be hard. See, I would retire for three years before she retired. Mm -hmm. So when she retired, I said, man, it's going to be hard to be with her every single day. <laughs> All day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And every day. All day. See, when we were bringing up kids, sometimes she worked, sometimes I worked. Okay. Then all the time when we, she worked in third shift, I worked in uh, first shift. So we were passing in the night. We did this for years. Because we didn't want our kids to get out of daycare. So we we going to fix so somebody always be at home with kids. And so we was with the kids all the time. And we were you know, a whole lot of time by ourselves. And we enjoyed the time we did that by ourselves. And we always do that. You know, I always do that. You know, I, I'm going to be separate for time. And then the thought, the reality hit me that, man, she was tired. I was tired. I was tired. <laughs> but I found out that it's much more than I anticipated. I enjoy being with her all day. I look forward to being with her all day. My anticipation is being with her all day. And when she's gone, I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> hey, hey, when you coming home? I'm like, with my girlfriend. Well, what time you coming home? <laughs> Come down wrong. You know what I'm saying? But in my mind, it's like, I got to be up all day, every day. The intimacy has had the opportunity to grow. Because we had kids in the way. Now, I would trade my kids for nothing in this world. I would have for them. But nevertheless, they were a distraction. Because they had to be fed. They had to be clothed. They had to be made. And then you got to spend quality time with them. Yeah, kids, they want real time. They don't want nothing this fancy look for our master. They want time. Amen. They want your full undivided attention. Amen. So those were distracting. But as we as we got older, and we went through the empty nest phase, you know, we had a big old house, and then our daughter graduated from high school. She went off to college, and now we up there, we're trying to eat this big old house, we're trying to cool this big old house. It's like, baby, we need to get a small house. Amen. The rooms are empty. Don't nobody go in the basement. The pool table down there got cold on top of it. Okay. <laughs> it's time for us to do something different. Let's bear it out. Amen. So, what I'm telling you is that the dynamics in our lives change, and as they change, you learn to appreciate every moment. Yes. You learn to appreciate every moment that you have to spend with your kids, with your loved ones, with the saints of God. Amen. You learn to anticipate and take full advantage of it. That's a kingdom perspective. Amen. So from here on out, if you don't get nothing else, I want you to get this one thing today. Find out what God has to say about anything that shall occur in your life. And there's going to be some stuff that will rise up. But when they do, you find out what God has to say about it. How, how does he see it? Because oftentimes, we see things in our lives that are taken to be bad when they're really for your good. Yeah. Come on now. Yes. Romans 8 28. Mm -hmm. Come on, say 27. All things work together. Work together. Come on. For the good of those who love, 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 love Call according to his purpose. God has a purpose for us. Amen. He has a purpose for you. Amen. Find out what it is. Ask him. You got to get to know God so he will reveal to you the plan he has for your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope you got something out of the word of God. If you did, set your feet, give a little mighty round of applause. Amen. 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 I certainly appreciate it. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your people. I thank you for your patience, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Father, that this word that uh, you have placed in our hearts, Father, that we may hide in our hearts, that we might not sin against you, Lord. And open up the eyes of our heart, Father, that we may take on your perspective in every area of our lives, Lord. We don't want to make a move without you, Lord. Help us, Almighty God, to see what you see and to do what you told us to do. And what the hope of our calling is. 
We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord Savior. And I said, your own personal Lord Savior, because a, a, a relationship with Christ, an intimate relationship with Christ, it should be a personal relationship. Amen. It has to be personal between you and God. But because it's personal does not mean that it should be hidden. Amen. Amen. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ simply means that you accept the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for you. Amen. Amen. And his sacrifice that he came from heaven, died upon the cross for your sins and for my sins, that when he comes back again to re receive the church, that you and I get to go with him. Amen. Amen. Right. For the Bible says this for the people who belong to God, those who have a personal relationship with God. The Bible says that when we die, to be absent from our body is to be present with the Lord. Only the people who belong to God can accept that. Amen. Those ones who do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ cannot make that proclamation. Amen. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say this simple prayer, but you must mean it in your heart for yourself. You just simply say, Lord, I am a sinner, and I need to be saved. I want to be saved. I believe that you came from heaven and you died upon the cross for all of my sins. I receive you as my substitute, and I ask that you would help me to live a life that is pleasing unto you from this day forward. I believe it, and I receive it, and I thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My brother, so if you said the prayer, you need to know that you're saved. There's nothing anyone can do to make you unsaved, and I want to be the first to welcome you to the family of God. God bless you. Hope you get right in the next Sunday. Bye-bye for now.